Hey, welcome to Options Brew TV Traders Workshop. That's what we're calling this, Stephen. Stephen, welcome to the show. He's our resident mathematician and trading bot expert. So, um, Stephen, go ahead and talk a little bit. Just tell him a little bit about yourself first. Yes. Yeah, so first, thanks for having me on again, Lex. And um, so just a little bit about me. Um, I've been a frequent trader for many years, and now I've just gotten into uh, the algorithm space. An algorithm trader? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I love it. Okay. So, and then, so obviously you have mathematical skills, you have coding skills, you, you, you create these bots. Um, what do you have for us today? I think this is our first trading bot and it's, it's going to be, I think you said a six part series. Is that, is that what we're shooting for? Yeah. We're going to build a few trading bots in a few different languages, back test and live trading. Mm -hmm. So people have an understanding of how to use the trader API and how they can implement their own ideas. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Have at it. I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to understand this very much, except for the trading part of it, since I don't code, but I'll do yeah. my best. <laughs> yeah, you, you'll get it. Okay. Okay. So, so the first part, this is the first part of the series. This is a back test. So before you implement any algorithm, you should back test it unless you're crazy and you just want to take on a lot of risk. <laughs> you just want to go in blind. So the first thing Every algorithm is going to need your API key from Tradio. This is how you access the data. So we have a function here. We just call it access token. It returns our API key. So we're going to call this for every function so we could actually use the data. Mm -hmm. The next thing is we need a function for the ticker symbol because you have to trade some type of ticker. After that, we need to load uh, the start and end dates for the back test. So we have functions for the start date and the end date. Okay, got it. Then, so this strategy is going to be a simple Bollinger Band strategy, which is just you have some moving average, and then um, you take that moving average and you take the standard deviation of the components of the moving average and you make an upper threshold and a lower threshold. Okay, let me ask you a question. So the yep. upper threshold and lower threshold from the moving average. So first question, um, is it one standard deviation up and one standard deviation down? Yeah, it's one standard deviation up and one standard deviation down. The goal is, in theory, that this should capture about 70% of the, uh, the movement. Okay. Um, and good. If you want two standard deviations, that's about 95% thereabouts, right? Yeah, 95%. Okay, got it. So you ch you've chosen one up, one down. Um, what kind of moving average is it? Is it is there a certain period to it? Yeah, it's just a simple moving average, and it's a, a twenty day period. So it, you just take the twenty days and you just average it out. Okay. Any significance to twenty versus thirty versus fifty versus a hundred? Yeah. So if you use a hundred day moving average, then it's just not going to move as quick as a twenty day moving average or something like that. Like. Um, like you could think of like the golden cross strategy when you have like the 20 day crosses the 50 day or something like that. Like every moving average is going to be different. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Good deal. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. So this is, this is our Bollinger Bands function. This is how we build uh, the basis of the back test. So first we need to connect to the trader API. And then, so also let me add this, this function has four arguments. Argument one is the access token. Argument two is the start date. Argument three is the end date. Argument four is the ticker symbol. So we see here it's symbol gets R4. Yep. Good. Uh, authorization, the API key gets R1, and then start and end is R2 and three. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then so we need to compute the length, like how many prices there are in this back test. So the length, we just call the length function in Python, and then we just parse through. Uh, what, what data we got from the API. And now we need to initialize our arrays because we have to store this data somewhere. Mm -hmm. So we have the closing prices and it's, and it's the length of all the prices that we got from the array. And then the moving average, the upper band and the lower band are going to be that same length, but minus 20 because the first 20 days, that's the first moving average. So, mm -hmm. you know, zero through 20, yep. one through 21, so on and so forth. And then we have a temporary array uh, to store data, and okay. it's just uh, twenty. It's just length twenty. Sure. And okay. how are the? How is it working with the Tradier APIs? Is it pretty uh, pretty good for you? Yeah, the Tradier API is great. It's the best one on the market. The okay. documentation is fantastic. Good. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. 
Good. And so, so now we have to fill these arrays. So we start with our counter i equals zero, and we're going to loop from i equals zero to when i uh, is greater than the length. That's when it stops. We're incrementing by one. So this array okay. here, close prices sub i. This is just going to get all of the close prices. Mm -hmm. Then we move on from there, and we initialize another counter at twenty, and we're going to loop from j is less than the length. So what it is here, it's filling these things here. Mm -hmm. And before we were just filling this. Got it. So that's where we start with twenty. Okay, I understand. And so we have another variable k gets j, so k will be twenty, twenty-one, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then the limit is j minus twenty. And then the index is zero. And so we're going to loop through while k is greater than the limit. Mm -hmm. And then we use, we use this temporary array 19 minus the index. So the way we're computing the moving average is we're just looping backwards. Mm -hmm. OK. And then after that, we have everything that we need to build our Bollinger Bands. So uh, we assign this variable sigma. And it gets the standard deviation of temp. So it's just going to take those 20. Um, closing prices and compute the, the standard deviation. Then after that, we're going to start filling our arrays for the moving average, upper band, and lower band. So the moving average is just the sum of the temporary array divided mm -hmm. by 20, a simple moving average. Right. And then the upper band is just going to be that moving average plus our sigma. And then the lower band is just going to be that moving average minus our sigma. And then we increment J. And then we return all of the data. Now right. we're going to plot and see what we have. So we're going to type in a ticker. Let's do Lockheed Martin, because I was looking at it earlier. And uh, now we type in our start and end dates. So we're going from January 1st to today, mm -hmm. June 14th. And now we're going to see what we got here. So this first chart is our Bollinger Band chart. Okay. So the blue line is the moving average. The lower band is the orange line. The upper mm -hmm. band is the green line. Mm -hmm. And then the red line is the closing prices. So you could see um, you know, that it moves within these, these bands. It's going to touch the upper band and lower band sometimes. And that's when we make these trades. And here's our profit and loss. So we made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine trades, I think I count. And so eight of the nine were successful. But one was the one that was bad this was one, right? quite bad. Yeah. So maybe to make this better, maybe there should be a stop loss in it or something like that. Right. So if you go back to the, to that graph of the Bollinger bands and the price action, yeah, uh, the one before that, yeah, there you go. So here's what happened, right? So I'm assuming that you got in here on a short yes. and the next time it crossed the average where you would get out probably with the strategy is way yeah. up here. The difference between those two prices is pretty severe. Yeah. And so that generated a large loss. And so you have to remember that Bollinger Bands are a good strategy when the underlying doesn't move violently. So mm -hmm. look at that large move. Like that's why it did badly. Yep, exactly yeah. right. Yeah, this is the movement you want, right? Here's a great one, crosses, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Here's another yep. great one, crosses. Again, great one, crosses. All those are profitable. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Those are these ones here. Yes. Those were all awesome. profitable. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, you know, maybe what you can do is I mean, this is just a question. I don't know if this is the right answer. Maybe you can do some sort of study in your back test of what average P is, not as opposed to L, P and L. Mm -hmm. Um, and then maybe make your stop somewhere adjusted based on that average, you know, so that you you only have this one little baby. So that's especially if your your batting average is great, which it is here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so eight out of nine uh, is pretty good. Yeah. yeah, it's just the one blew it all out of the water. That's the, that's the problem. Yes, but it's still profitable. Um, year to date, we made $47. Okay. The price of Lockheed Martin, I think it's around, like this is around a 10% um, return. What's it? The last trade was at 394. Mm -hmm. So it's over 10% um, in, just, in just a few months. So like that's better than the market. So there's some right. health. Yeah, no, no, that's good. That's a good point too. Um, yeah, so I mean, you could still look at ways to enhance it, but this is great. So here's all this 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 profit stuff, and, the, and you said the profit was forty seven dollars ish, right there. Yeah. Okay. That's, right. that's great. Good. Good. Even with that big loss. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So How many it, shares was was this, Stephen? And so this is just trading one share. Oh, just one share. That's not bad. 
Yeah. And so, so now this last function is like the mechanics of the back test. So again, we need to compute the length and the length is mm -hmm. R one zero. So that's just this, the moving average. Okay. Mm -hmm. But then we need our Boolean variables, which is like a true false variable to track what's in our portfolio. So if it's true or false, if we have a position and then we need an array to track our P and L, and then we need two more variables initialized to zero that are going to track the last price and the current price. And then we loop through again. We saw this before. You start at I equals zero. Then you go loop up until the length. So you loop through the whole, you know, you loop through the whole data set. Right. And so to open a short position here, there we go. So ARG three is the closing prices. So if the closing prices are greater than ARG two, that's um, the uh, lower band. I mean, mm -hmm. no. So this is ARG zero, mm -hmm. ARG one, ARG two, ARG three. Mm -hmm. So when the closing prices are greater than uh, the upper limit, we're going to short it. Mm -hmm. And so that's here. So the, so we're going to record that price, and we're going to say we sold at that price. And then we're going to just say, now we have something in the portfolio. Mm -hmm. And now we close it when the closing price is less than the moving average. Mm -hmm. And then we record that price, and we compute the difference, and then we reassign our portfolio variable. And then we do the same for a long position. Got it. And yeah. then Right. So but the difference with the long position is... Arg, I can't remember if it's three or two, but arg three is less than arg two, right? Was it? Yeah, so opening along, uh, it's gonna be when the closing price is less than the lower band. That's correct. And then right. you're closing it when when it's greater than the moving average. Correct, okay. So we're opening positions at these, at these sigma levels, plus or minus one sigma, and then we're closing it at the moving average. Understood. Yeah, and then that's it. So, um, uh, so this, this works. So if you want to test your own strategy with Bollinger Bands, we're going to publish the code and you can try out your own strategy and you could even make changes to this. Great. Yeah. Awesome. So someone could actually you take this code in and, um, implement it, uh, him or herself, uh, into their trading strategy. If, if so, they so choose. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. And, you know, you could modify it. Maybe you don't want to use both. Like, um, so the logic of every bot is the same, right? Mm -hmm. You need to track your portfolio and track your P&L. That's it. But, um, right. so, you, it, you know, if you want to implement a different strategy, you would just change the Bollinger Bands function to whatever other strategy you want to implement. Got it. Okay, good. And so would if you were doing this yourself and you're a coder and you have an account and you can use the APIs, would you be automating the strategy yourself? Would this be an automatic entry or would you would send you a signal? And you say, yes, I want to do that. Yes. Yeah, so what you have to do, you want to have to do Okay. And you set the share size and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So this is set to one, but if you want, like, if you want your back test set to like 10 shares or 100 shares, you just multiply your PL uh, by that number. Right. Respect. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Any, uh, any peek into what the next bot is going to be in our next episode or no? Yeah, so the next bot is we're just going to do like a simple statistical learning bot. So okay. it's just going to be, you need to find some non-station, I mean, you need to find stationary data and then you draw a regression line. And then basically that's going to tell you when to buy or sell. Okay, so, okay, that's great. I'm looking forward to that one. And then any chance that all this stuff can be combined into one big bot or you just don't yeah. do that? Yeah, yeah, you could combine as many things as you want. Okay, good. Okay, good. I'll look forward to that. All right, Steven. So the next one we'll do next week, right? Um, episode two, let's call it. Yep. Episode two is coming next week. Awesome. Thank you very much for coming. We look forward to the next one. Thanks for having me on, Max. All right.